The playoffs have reached St. Paul. The Wild and Stars are at the X for games three and four, so Kirsten and I are getting you prepped and amped for what's to come this weekend in an early episode release. As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Talk North, Greenbelt, Jim Beam, Livia, and Royal Credit Union. This is season four, episode 173. Celebrate your favorite Minnesota sports teams and moments with SodaStick.com. Relive the Met Center chairs, the Metrodome push, and so much more with unique and quality garb found only at SodaStick. Don't forget to add code BARDOWNBEAUTIES at checkout for 15% off all of your purchases. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition. Like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game, or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. 40% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2021. James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporated, Fairmont, Kentucky. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, depending on when we release this early release day for the Bard on Beauty's Pod, because you know what? It's playoffs. We're hyped. We are jacked. Jesse Pierce, NHL.com, Wild.com, and she's Kirsten Kroll in Game Arena. You will see her lovely face plastered all over this weekend as the Minnesota Wild come home for games three and four against the Dallas Stars in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Kirsten, first of all, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm definitely not as beautiful as you. I call Thank this. You. I woke up like this because I rolled out of bed 10 minutes ago for you guys. So, but I'm excited. I'm excited. Hockey is back in St. Paul where it should be. Um, and yeah, just excited to see everybody excited to be out and about and seeing the wild fandom. And I'm ready for some chirps. I want to hear them. We all want to hear them. I think there's a lot that needs to be said and vented out. We're here to assist you. We will have a quote unquote bent line of sorts at today's block party outside of Herbie's on the patio, unless they move it. I think they're supposed to be like light flurries. Sorry about that. Uh, but that will be going from five to eight. We will be out there for the majority of that with a camera and a boom mic ready for you to talk your smack to Dallas, to the Dallas Stars fans, whatever you want to say, keep it relatively clean, guys. I'm going to preface it right now. Let's not go too crazy overboard. Let's have some fun, though. Let's get out there. Be sure to come say hey. We'd love to see you guys. We will be there uh, all block party-ish time, most of the time. Most of the time. We'll go with that. Uh, but Kirsten, three and four. Obviously, series tied one and one. Not a great showing in game two in Dallas for your Minnesota Wild. And it's not just Mark andre Fleury's fault. I'm going to say that again. It is not just Mark andre Fleury's fault. Like, people are coming for him. Now they're coming for me. I've never been such a goalie defender in my goddamn life. But here I am. Because you know what? Mark andre Fleury, I wouldn't have changed the way Dean coached that either. I was fine with putting him in. I'm all about the goaltending rotation. It is now Philip Gustafson's uh, net, I believe. Dean hasn't announced that. He will not tell us anything about his lines, which is classic playoff Dean. But Kirsten, first, let's start there. Goaltending. I mean, it's egregious to think that it's not Philip Gustafson tonight and probably Sunday as well. Well, first, I would have started game two the same way. I would have put Fleury in net because... Typically throughout the season, it's usually been pretty consistent in net between the two of them. Now, I will say I've been a hard on flurry a lot throughout the year, probably more than most. He's got a lot of defenders out there. I don't think he's been that fantastic this season, but I still get to give Gus a break. And I like the idea of keeping the opponents on their toes, alternating goaltenders after game two. Again, not all Flurry's fault. I was very, very, very unimpressed. Like I shut my TV off after the second period and went to sleep. I was like, I've seen all I need to see. Flurry did not look great in that game. The defense also looked really bad. Horrendous. And there's, yes, there's a lot I can say there too that I want to get into, that I want to say, that I want to vent yeah. about. But no, the goaltending, it is Gus and it should be Gus from here on out. I no longer trust Flurry in net at this moment. I'm having trust issues. That's the problem. Um, I I just Gus, I think, has the faith of everyone. And at this moment in time, it should be Gus. Yeah, I mean, and I'm sure Mark Andre Fleury would say the same thing. And I think Gus, I mean, again, the thing that I think wasn't really like 
talked about Gus was pretty sore, pretty banged up. Not to say that Jake Ottinger probably wasn't sore and banged up from that double overtime as well, but giving him a rest, you already stole mm-hmm. that one and you absolutely stole that one game one in double overtime when Ryan Hartman scored. Um, I just didn't think it was a bad situation. And that's not me going all lament Minnesota fandom. Like, Oh, it's fine. We're one and one. Like, no, I really, that's okay with me. I don't love the way the rest of the team performed necessarily either. Let's dive into defense. How much does defense need to improve? Again, we're recording this right before the start of game three. So you'll be listening to it before games three and four, before we get a new episode out on Monday. Um, but Is it time for John Merrill to ride the pine pony as God intended, as we had thought was supposed to happen until John Klingberg gets hurt, screws up everything, forces John Merrill in, who continues to look worse and worse. I didn't know that was possible. Worse and worse, Kirsten. Lord, help me. Set the man. Why is he in the lineup? It was literally, it ruined my, it made my day when you told me He is being scratched. He will not be playing game one. I was like, oh my gosh, I have been listened to. Like, I have been heard. Thank you. And then a couple hours later, what do I see? John Merrill slotting in with Brock Faber. And I screenshotted it. I texted you and I said, what the heck is this about? And just ruined my day. Then again, in the game, You run 5D and you sit John Merrill for part of that game one. And I was like, this is what should have been happening. Like, how bad is it that you're running five defensemen and benching one of them mid game? Like it's gotten to that point. And then there he is game two back out there again. Like, why are we not seeing anyone else? Like, why do we keep coming back to this? He needs to be sat game three and the rest of the series, the rest of the playoffs. I can no longer, I can no longer, I can't. I know it's okay. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I did pinpoint Dean yesterday again, knowing he's not telling us lines, knowing he's not going to tell us anything, especially a day ahead of morning skate. Hopefully we find a little bit more clarity there today. But I said, you know, you guys have been pretty structurally sound defensively. Wednesday was really bad. Still some lapses. And I, of course I was trying to point a finger at number four without pointing a finger at number four. And I mean, it definitely sounds that changes are coming. And of course, you're going to have to change things after you lose. I think that's something that we are going to see from Dean in this series that you didn't see in the St. Louis Blues series last year is Dean is going to respond to some of those changes. He's going to respond to a loss and maybe change some things. And I love to see it. I would not be surprised if you see Alex Goligoski tonight, if John Klingberg is not ready to go. Now, that's always a possibility. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing Klingberg in there, but I wouldn't mind seeing Goose either. I, anybody but John Merrill. I'll go freaking play defense. I will go suit up. I know everyone's probably going to be like, what about Kaylin Addison? Well, that's not going to happen. I'm sorry. Guys. I would rather see Kaylin Addison. I have this no problem season, with him. I'm like, why are we playing John Merrill and not yeah. Kaylin Addison? He's Regardless, been in Dean's doghouse for some reason. I don't know. He why. has been. He has been. Regardless of p- any potential not being a great defenseman issues Kaylin Addison has in Dean's eyes. He even brings more offensively. Like he brings something to the table on a power play that can't freaking score. That would be helpful. Probably. I just don't understand. I don't understand. And also I'm seeing a lot of criticism for Brock Faber. I'm just going to say, knock it off. Who are you following? Are you just following a bunch of Huskies that just hate the Gophers? Because I have seen nothing but praise for that. I saw a lot of praise after game one. And let's talk about that fantastic save. Not save. That's dramatic to say save. But how he had a big hand in stopping a potential Dallas Stars goal. Getting a stick on it. Going for that dive. So much credibility earned there. Saw a lot of praise for him after that. But I think it kind of was going around after game two. Just a lot on everybody, but I also saw some for Brock Faber mixed in there. And I'm like, that is completely, we're not going there. He's not the problem. You need help. You guys all need help, I think. The playoffs are crazy, and so is my schedule. Late night surrounded by pizza and mini donuts while watching the fans cheer on the Minnesota Wild. It makes a girl go hungry. But that's why I'm so grateful for my team of experts at Livia who are keeping me on track and supporting my goals in my weight loss journey. They're helping me create a food schedule with plenty of options to have me fueled for the long days. And I could not be more thrilled than to be on this journey and losing that baby and food weight with Livia. Plus, if you join right now, you'll get three months absolutely free. Don't wait for the buzzer to sound on this deal. Call Livia today at 855-GO-LIVIA. That's 1-855-465-4832 and let them know Jesse Pierce and the Bardown Beauty sent you. 
Uh, again, looking ahead to three and four tonight, Kirsten. Is it crucial to win game three after such a devastating loss in Dallas? Do you think if Minnesota comes out flat and loses the first game here at home, that that could be a signal of what's to come in the series and that they might not make it through? Or do you are you approaching it as it's still just one game? Are you pulling a Dean on me and being like, it's just one game. We're not worried about it. We're worried, Dean. We're freaking worried a little bit. But how do you feel that plays out? Because personally, I'll state mine. I think it's crucial. It's imperative. You need to get that good feeling back. You need to put some goal. And I don't think it's, again, it's not going to be a high scoring goal. I was shocked to see Dallas put seven up. Was it seven? Yeah. Seven up on them because I didn't think either team in this series was going to be able to score more than four goals. And, you know, Dallas was able to do it. Rupee hints, you know, just a dagger. Uh, but do you think it's imperative? I think so. What are your thoughts? I would say if game two, if the Dallas Stars didn't essentially embarrass the Wild in the fashion that they did, especially after the Wild came back to make it a one-goal game, scoring two goals within 11 seconds, to bring it that close just to have Dallas come back a few minutes later, score two in under a minute to regain that lead, I think that was very defeating. I think we saw it from that point on. And so if that didn't happen, and if it was just a one goal game, if it was a close game, I would have said tonight would have been just a game if it was close. No, they need to respond tonight after game two. And they need to show that they're not going to get pushed around because that's all I saw in game two is them getting pushed around and shown we're Dallas, we're coming for you. And then laughing about it, scoring on a breakaway. I don't remember if it was shorthanded, what it It was. was, but just stuff like that. And so they need to come back at home. I need to see them win one of these next two games at home because I'm skeptical. Maybe that's just because of last season, but home ice hasn't necessarily been to their advantage. So they need to take tonight. They need to take it. And I will always maintain like home ice is great for the fan base. Yes. It's great to have people on your side at the end of the day. It doesn't make a difference. Truly. Like it's, you have to win on the road too. You can't, you're not going to sweep a series at home. That's not how this works guys. So home ice to me is not, a big deal. Again, great for fans. Great to get back there. And you want to have an extra good showing for them, but it's not that it's not everything. It's not as much in the locker room as you think. Uh, you know, yesterday Dean mentioned embellishing and how he feels that Dallas is diving a little bit, as he said, quote, um, a lot of their big guys went down pretty easy. If you ask me and Pete DeBoer before Dallas took off to come to Minnesota yesterday had said, yeah, we know that Minnesota is the sixth penalized team in the national hockey league. We're trying to exploit that. Do you think Dallas has been diving? I do feel I'll go back to uh, Domi's the four minute minor, which really started the whole chaos for Minnesota Domi scratching the hell out of his face to get the blood coming. So he could get that double minor on the high stick. I do feel like there might be a little bit of it. You hate to say it. You hate to see it. Dean and the team clearly think that that's going on. Do you think Dallas is embellishing? And do you think that the refs are going to be more aware of that? Having both coaches spoken out about it coming into tonight in St. Paul. I don't think the refs are going to be more aware of it. Cause quite frankly, I really don't think they care that much. And maybe that's just me. <laughs> being annoyed it makes or breaks a game you're giving penalties out you got to pay attention to that I mean come yeah. on um I would definitely say at least from what I've seen seemed like some of the calls a little I didn't see them the way officiating probably would have because it seemed like we just had some drama queens out on the ice being like I could probably make this a penalty um something I have seen though is a lot of cheap shots by Ryan Suter I want that taken care of Ryan Reeves said if it gets out of hand they'll take care of it hold him accountable I need to see that because quite frankly I am so irritated by it I'm so annoyed when was it game one two cross checks I think they're both on Kaprizov yes. one just right in the crease though that knocks them to the ground where's the call Where's the call? Why are we not paying a closer eye to Ryan Suter? And then Marcus Foligno even comes after him, gets in his face a little bit in one clip, and he's like backing off. He wants none of it. And I'm like, well, you need to start backing up what you're doing because right now you're just kind of being like, I'm going to do this when no one's watching and then walk away and not be able to talk to one of the enforcers on the team. I'm so annoyed with him, as is everybody else. But that's my prevent line for tonight. Let it out. Again, you can come find us. 
from five to eight at the Minnesota Wild pregame party right outside of Herbie's, where we will allow you to vent and say the things that you want to say to the Dallas Stars. It'll be great. Again, keep it clean. Keep it clean, guys. Kirsten did a good job of showing you a good example of venting your frustration. Uh, I you am know, the model. <laughs> it's funny. I went to that watch party at the X for game two. And people, similar to how the stars were booing Matt Dumbo when he touched the pucks, people in the audience were booing Ryan Suter every time he touched the pucks. So I imagine it will not be a nice welcome home to Suits when he is in town this evening. Switching to the offensive side of things, especially for Dallas now, I have a concern, Kirsten, is that Dallas, even when they potted all those goals, you know who wasn't scoring was Jason Robertson. Jason Robertson through these first two games has been relatively quiet which you might say jesse that's a great thing no it's not because it's terrifying because he has not scored and has not seemingly turned it on yet right like it's coming i feel like it's coming especially with joe pavelski out he is not traveling to minnesota so he's definitely not playing these next two games i think i don't think he's probably even likely for game five because concussion protocol i believe is a set amount of time that he has to sit out which he is now in um but how concerned are you that Jason Robertson hasn't shown up on the score sheet? How concerned should Minnesota Wild be that he hasn't scored up on the short score sheet? Because me personally, I don't like it. I'm terrified he is the leading scorer, leading point getter for um, Dallas. I mean, people could argue Kirill too, but Kirill scored game one. You know, Kirill's still Kirill. Mm-hmm. Jason Robertson is lethal scoring. And the fact that he hasn't really been doing a lot of that, it worries me that it's just been holding boiling up and is going to come to an overflow at some point in the series? Um, a couple of things. I mean, not to discredit anything with Jason Robertson, cause he's fantastic. And I hate that for us, but I guess I'm not overly concerned that he hasn't really gotten heated up in this series. Um, and there's two reasons for that. Maybe this poor defense that Minnesota has one thing they have been able to do right is contain Jason Robertson a little bit more. So I'm going to try to be an optimist for once and say, maybe that's the case. Like it's just men holding their guy accountable. And so making sure he doesn't go all over and take advantage. Um, The other option is maybe he's just going through a rut and maybe that's like cause for your worry here. Um, I mean, we've seen stretches very few and they haven't lasted very long, even like, Kirill, not necessarily seeing Kirill things from him, but I mean, everyone goes through that and maybe just this series, like that's something he's dealing with. And I'm completely okay with that. If Jason Robertson's in a rut, that works even better for us. So, I mean, that's true. I don't want to like stir the pot, but I do want to stir the pot. I needed some Mm -hmm. sort of talking point, but I just had noticed that like, Hmm, that's interesting. I find that very interesting. Now it's more concerning that obviously they're getting the secondary scoring and the third Mm -hmm. scoring and all of that. Uh, final kind of point of contention heading into this weekend's series at home games, three and four series tied one to one. Do we see Jules Erickson in game three and or game four? I know he's your boy and God, he would be a game breaker for your Minnesota wild. Obviously we knew that you were going to miss him. You missed him down the stretch of those regular season games. You're going to miss him during a playoff series where you need some center depth, you need some big body, you need somebody in front of the net, which they have not had. Uh, do we see Jules Eric's neck this year, this uh, second half of the series? We need to see Jewel Erickson Eck. I mean, I was very hopeful that he even, not only that I had heard and seen he's skating again and he's doing some harder skates to try to get going, but also like when he traveled with the team to Dallas, just in case, That was very hopeful for me, but now being back at home, we need jewel back. And I'm hoping that it's just kind of like an hour by hour thing, like evaluating him consistently to see like, okay, where are you at? Like they know they need him too. And I don't, we've, we've talked about a little, like, can we just give him like a cortisol? I'm not a doctor. So please do not like, this is not shoot him up. It'll be fine. Can we give him like a cortisol shot or something? You hear about that happening in game with like ribs. Like, can we do that? Like, I mean, I just seen extra push. I've seen, uh, what's that football movie? You know, I'm completely blanking the one in tech, not Friday night lights, but the, you're, you're uh, very young. Oh man. What's it called? Varsity blues. Okay. They shoot him up in the knee constantly, right? Like, just shoot him up. One of my gymnastic shows. That's what they did to one of the gymnasts. <laughs> um, yeah. But also another question, Ryan Hartman, do we know, is he back for game three? 
We don't. We are recording this at nine. As of nine twenty-seven, we don't know. I would venture to guess yes. I mean, he. I, it was shocking still to me that he went and scored that double overtime goal because we saw how much pain he was in on the bench in game one. Mm-hmm. Um, I would venture to bet he is back for game three, just knowing what this game means, what this means for the series, kind of how it hinges on there. Um, because he looked for all intents and purposes, looked okay. Right. In game two, it's not like he's hobbling on anything. It doesn't seem like it's any severe mm-hmm. injury. It's just a lot of, and a lot of these guys are bumped and bruised and hurt. And it's lines are going to have to be looked at. Right. Um, so I think we're, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to say, yes, he's back in tonight. We'll see what happens. My line heathens can follow me on Twitter. You guys can follow both of us on Twitter at Bard on Beauties Pod. Again, come see us for the pregame party. We will be there. We will be at the rink. You'll see Kirsten's face glammed up on the big screen. You'll see mine. You won't see mine unless you're looking up in the press box. Way there. Uh, but it'll be a good time. Can't wait to get the X rocking. So we're releasing this episode today. We've got more content coming all weekend. We will have another episode Monday and one of us might be in Dallas next week to be determined, but lots of good content, playoff content bear with us. It's a fluid situation. So we can't give you like the full episode, right? Because as we talked about last week with John Merrill being scratched and wasn't scratched, it's just, it's a pain in the ass. You guys, it's a pain in the ass to be so knee jerk, but here we are giving you the content because we love you. We love hockey. We love the Minnesota wild, all of that good stuff. I'm just hoping for a good game. I need it. I want it. Let's go. Let us know your predictions for tonight and for game four. And uh, we'll see you at the X. Go wild. This podcast is made possible due to listeners like you. Thank you.